and share this last service. I mean, I feel it pressed upon me. This is not a political statement at all, but I'm just here to tell you. Satan has been coming for our kids for a long time. Yeah. And the things that are accepted in our school system, praise God, not this school system. But I, I want you to know, we went way past left and right. This is called good and evil. And I believe that our kids' souls and their identity are on the line. And I think it's time for the church to get bold and pray and stand in the gap for those who will not. Are you with me? Been in a relationship series called Relationships, where we're looking at getting real. And if you never address what you need to address, you'll never be able to fix it. Not that God can't, but God gives us freedom to let his grace come in and, and change a relationship. And I'll tell you what, the testimonies have been marvelous. God is redeeming marriages in Jesus' name. And I just wanna share that. Like this isn't just some formality that we do. We get up here, we read some words, we feel good, we sing songs. Listen, God is changing people's lives in our midst. Like Maddie and I, campus pastor and the wife, Worship pastor, like, like we're, we're growing closer to Jesus through what he's doing. I, I don't want you just to come in and, oh man, the church is growing and it's awesome. Man. I want every day, to God, what do you want to do in my marriage? What do you want to do in me? It's time to get real about relationships. And today I, I want to talk to you about parenting, but before I get there, I wanna read Ephesians chapter four, and what we've been doing throughout this series is, yes, looking at, at scriptures that pertain to marriages, but also just the body of Christ, and as Christ followers, we're called to behave this way, and you wanna present that to your spouse first. Have you ever noticed it's easier sometimes to love everyone else but those closest to us? Ephesians chapter four, verse two through three, it says, always, be humble and gentle. I lost some of you right there. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. I believe that as we are united to the spirit of God, we are able to be the parents that God desires us to be. Let me put it another way. I believe that as we grow into our mature Christian faith and become the children of God that he desires, we are able to then be the parents to our children that they need. If you want to be the parent that God has called you to be, you must first learn to be the child of God that you're called to be. So Father, with that in mind, we come into prayer and I ask, Lord, for your spirit to move. I can already sense you, God. You're, you're moving already. I watched what you did in first service and I'm believing, God, that you have something powerful in this service. So Lord, would you move in a powerful way? We love you and pray this in your name. And everyone said, amen. You may be seated. So one of the things that I hate the most but end up loving afterwards is family pictures. And all, at least the dad said, Amen. Like, I love the outcome. I, I love looking at our sweet little kids and, oh, they're so perfect. And they're amazing, right? As a matter of fact, I want to show you how sweet and how perfect our two little kids are. If you'll, you'll put it on, like, oh, right? Like, they're so sweet. And she's like, I love you, little bubby. And she's like, I love you, big sissy. We best friends forever. Look at us smiling, taking pictures. Yeah, that is a lie. That is deception at its finest. Please go to the next one. That is reality. Some of you can't see it. Just envision kids losing their mind. It was terrible. It was cold. It was rainy. It was not rainy, but I'm trying to make it worse. And I remember before your parent, before your parent, you're like, I will never do that. Like you go out to eat, like, are you serious? Look at that. And then you become a parent, and you're like, Hey, how much money do you want to shut up right now, right? <laughs> and I remember, like, hey, I will give you bubble gum. I will buy you the biggest sucker in the world if you just smile right now. 
But if you look to the right, this is their, their little cousin. She's the oldest one of the group. She's looking at, at Navy as she's losing her mind. Nox is like, help! And she's looking at me basically like, are you going to parent them? Hey, hey, Dylan, are you going to do your job? I'm being judged by a five-year-old right now. Parenting can be that way sometimes, right? I, I mean, I love the outcome. The outcome, you know, put the edits in and all that. Like, here's our family. It was amazing. It was easy. Took two takes. That was it. Not. And sometimes parenting can be like pictures. The process is hard, but the outcome is worth it. See, to be a good parent, you've got to begin to count the cost. You've got to be loving. You've got to be patient. Today, I want to preach a message titled Real Good Parenting. As I just said, we live in a very broken world, so there needs to be some good, godly parenting going on. Can I get another amen? Not because I'm needing an amen right now. I just want us to know our world needs to see Christians leading the way in our parenting. Not where we have it all figured out, but where there's something different about what we do. But see, to be a really good parent, you have got to be very loving and patient. And that is extremely hard, to be loving and to be patient. But you, you have to understand that those, those are the things that signify there's something different. Listen, if you have a, a favorite parenting blog that you like to read, read them. If you love a certain author that you like to read about parenting, read the book. If you have a favorite podcast, listen to the podcast. If you have your own podcast, that's great. But what we need to know is the most foundational aspect of parenting is not what he or she says, no matter how it seems of a great parent they are. What we found our family on, how we found our parenting skills on, is what the Word of God says. That is what we do. And see, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Ephesus, and he's telling them, as Christians, here are the things that we need to do. And he tells them to be humble and gentle and all these things that we're going to look at. But if you notice in there, he says, make every effort to stay united. Listen, just like having a good marriage, parenting takes work. Parenting is this thing where you have to come in to the presence of God and say, Lord, I need you. And I know some of you are like, sweet little boy, you have only been a parent for three years. I know. And that's all I've needed to know. Jesus, I need you. I think sometimes the Lord is punishing me for my past sins sometimes. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I need you. But when you begin to try hard and you're based on the word of God, he shows up in ways that you never thought. But can we all agree, there comes a point in time where we've all reached the point where we just feel like, I'm not enough. Is any, listen, this is therapy right now. I, any parent ever felt there? You just felt like there's nothing else you can give to your parent or to your kids. Can I see your hand? Some of you are lying in church right now. It's like I need help. And see, the Apostle Paul tells this, starts with this letter by saying, always, not sometimes, not occasionally, not periodically, I'm running out of words, always. Listen, I don't care how holy you think you are in your own doing. You ain't always a good parent. You ain't always. I'll just ask your kids. Oh, I'm telling you. At staff meeting, Ashley, who's our kids minister, will tell us some of the funniest things. So, you know, I start judging you differently based on what your kids tell us. No, I'm joking. But the kids will just say the most random things. Like, you know, like, their situation, and they're not even true. Like sometimes Navy will be like, yeah, daddy hit mommy. I'm like, no, I did not. No, I did not hit her. We were like joking, wrestling last night. And, and she goes, you hurt mommy. I go, you better not tell Miss Ashley that tomorrow. I did not hurt her. Do not report me. I'm getting hotlined by a two-year-old. Always. I can't do always. Maybe you can. You've watched enough Oprah. You got it figured out. But it, it, it's when all of a sudden you, you, you've reached your breaking point. I can't do it anymore. I give up. You know, when mom or dad gets home and you do the swap, you're up. Can't do it anymore. And he's, he's speaking to Christians. 
He's saying you need to always be this way. But again, we got to start in the home. And let me just tell you a frustration within the ministry that a lot of spouses have is their spouse, who is the pastor, the minister, is really good out in public, not so good in private. And the good thing about our situation is, with Maddie being my wife and also on staff, I've got double accountability. See, as I said last week, I don't want to be famous, well-known outside the home more than I am inside the home. But when it comes to parenting, in order for, for this whole thing to take root is to be consistent. But he goes from always to being humble. Always be humble. Isn't that interesting? That's the first word that he chooses. Humility is John Maxwell and other people have said, a lot of people fight over who really said this. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking about yourself less. And soon as parenting, our parenting journey began, I realized I wasn't selfless quite like I thought. Like I figured out me, you know, as the, the, the single person, how to put others first, so I thought. And then you get married and then you, you learn that and you continue to learn. But then when, when Navy came, like, and she needed a lot of her mom's attention, my wife's attention. And sometimes I remember being like, I had her first. Like I had to humble myself. And then now as we have two kids and they are both learning to, to talk and, and all these different things, like, like sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes it's like, that's not what I want you to do. And this idea of humility sometimes it is to get on, on their level. It's not condescending, but it's like, let me not look, you know, be the superior person looking down at them. Let me get on their level. Maybe you've had a coach do this. I remember this. When an athlete wasn't getting it, the coach would, would kneel down and just said, hey, this is what I'm asking you to do. Tell me, what are you seeing right now? And, and I would watch some coaches just yell and get mad and, and man, you, you stink, you're not doing this. But the ones that would get down in their level say, what are you seeing right now? What would happen is they would begin to get it. They, they would realize that, oh, that's what my athlete is thinking. Now i got to rethink, help, help them with the, their, their thinking pattern. And, and we as parents, sometimes we're like, why are you doing that? Oh, wait, you're two. Some of you are like, no, he's 24 now and lives in my basement. That's a different story. But, but it's getting low, and it's like, hey, I love you. See, when Jesus was walking, many of you know this story, the disciples rejected the children. And Jesus said, no, 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 I welcome the children and, and bring them to me. See, we are all children of God and we need to understand no matter how old you are, no matter how gray your, 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 your beard is, God still sees us as children. And, and though you have a 401k and you have all of this figured out now, he still sees you like we see our little kids. And he said, I'm proud of you and I love you and I'm going to get to your level. What do you see right now? And guys, we need to, as parents, be gentle with them, which leads into the next one is you got to be patient. I don't have time to go over that right now, so I'm going to move on. Stupid jokes. It's there. Patience. This is not my gift. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit that we'll look at in a second, but, but to be patient, to be kind. See, Patience and gentleness is where we create this safe zone for our kids. And listen, you need to correct your children. Proverbs is filled with disciplining your children. And some of you hear that word discipline and you think it's negative. It has a negative connotation. It's not negative when it's, when it's in a godly sense. The Bible tells us to discipline our children. It says, man, you don't love if you don't discipline. And this isn't based on my parenting approach. Well, do you go in the corner? Do you count the three? I don't know. I have some theories. It doesn't matter. I'm not dogmatic upon that. I am dogmatic in the sense that there needs to be discipline that leads to repentance. So that way they know that God has a standard. And if you're not acting like God wants you to act, we're going to bring discipline there. And whatever you think is the best approach, so be it. Here's my question. Are you disciplining your children the way that you feel like God wants you to? 
And if it is not leading to a, a change, then you need to reevaluate. That's neither he, here or, or there. But what I am talking about is a lot of us, myself included, discipline was a very, very weird thing growing up. There was either no instruction whatsoever, or when discipline came, discipline came. And you can overcorrect. And I was talking to somebody about this the other day. You know, there's this kind of this uh, stigma sometimes with dads, and it's moms as well, but it's, it's the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, depending on the context. But this really gets passed around with kids. Ha, well, makes sense. I know who your dad was. I know who your mom was. And sometimes it's negative and sometimes it's positive. Sometimes it's just kind of a joking thing. And our little boy, Knox, Knox and Navy, very, very, uh, you know, normal names for kids. He, he started this thing, and I've alluded to it a few different times, where he just, he kind of hits his head on the ground like hard until he goes down to the basement. And the first time he realized that the concrete is much harder than the hardwood, so he doesn't do that anymore. Like he was down there yesterday, and he started to get mad, and he realized, oh, that's different. So he just kind of barely did it. Had to get on to him. And he just gets mad. And yesterday, we were watching my little sister play basketball, and it was the first time I took Knox there. And unlike Navy, he was interested in the game. If you're here last week, Navy just wants to eat popcorn. He's interested. And he just woke up from a nap, so he was irritated. He was overwhelmed by all the people. He's frustrated. And we're like, yeah. That Robinson blood in him. Frustrated. Mm. And it's true. Biblically speaking, theologically speaking, it is true. But as Christ followers, we don't believe that it's inevitable. We believe for a season that might be there, but there will come a point in time at the age of accountability when they put their, their trust in Jesus, where Jesus changes them from the inside out. So therefore, they don't have to be like dad and their dad and their dad. God can break chains in Jesus' name. And what's crazy is I'm a different person than I was before. I'm not gonna parent like this. I'm a man of God, I, I, I'm a pastor, yada, yada, yada. But sometimes when I have had it that day, and I've opened up three different fruit snacks that has no fruit in them whatsoever. And they're thrown on the ground. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I don't say that. And the other day I just, I had met my match. And Knox is just angry and we've been praying about this. I'm like, God, please help him. Help us. Like, yes, we're disciplining. That's not an issue. Yes, we're praying. Yes, but God, right now, I just see that anger deep down. I was an angry, rageful person. I grew up in a home where rage was there every single day of my life. And here he is in this home where there's no rage or anything of that nature, but it can come out. And it was cute for the first time. And then I realized there's way more to the story. And I just remember getting frustrated and I got down in his level, I was gentle and I was patient. And he tried to headbutt me, but I countered it real quick. Not today, Satan. And that made him mad. And I said, buddy, what's wrong? And I feel like he's like, I don't really know. Just mad. I said, hey, Bubba, Daddy loves you. I want you to know that. And then he just ran away. Man, I feel like God does that. See, I'm more polished now. You're not going to see me flipping out and cussing and blah, 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 blah. But man, he knows my heart sometimes and my frustration. And I feel like sometimes God says, hey, come on. What's, what's going on, bud? Well, here's what's up. And see, as we learn the Father's gentleness, the Father's patience, when we see our kids not do what we want them to do, we are able to get on their level because we know that God got on our level. And if you ever wanna be the parent that you wanna be, I'm three years in this game, 
I ain't writing a book on parenting anytime soon. But what I will say is, it takes a whole lot of work. And it's got to be grounded on this. And when you are gentle and patient, check this out at the very end. We make allowance for their mistakes, a.k.a. forgiveness, where I no longer hold it against you. I, I want to ask you this. How many of you in this room, rhetorically speaking, you were not extended the forgiveness as a kid as much as you would like? You messed up and your mom and your dad, were, man, you knew it was different at, at dinner time. Man, you knew you probably screwed up for, for a whole week. And I'm not talking where you deserve it. To the point where it's like, man, that, that was, you crossed the line. But I mean, just like you knew you were walking on eggshells all the time. And so you get older, you're like, I'm not going to do that for my kids. That, that will not be it. But something within you, as you begin to get frustrated, it comes out. And, and I, I'm not going to be like my dad, and, and, and it's going to be different and different and, and different. And, and then as a parent, when, when, when Knox was just doing that, oh, there's one day. I was trying to be polite. I was trying to be gentle. I got on his level. So I knew what I needed to do. Being the man of God that I am, I said, I will raise my voice at an almost two-year-old. That will help not. I said, Knox! I'm so glad you guys weren't there that day, but I'm telling it myself, so I feel better now. And you know what he did? Quit crying and said, sorry, Dad. Love you. He looked at me. And I knew in that moment I scared him. I, I, and I know there's a time and place to be stern, blah, blah, blah. But in this moment, I knew that even though I said, I will never, there I was. And sometimes when we have, have fallen into that, we've experienced that, the very thing that we dislike is the very thing that we can adapt. And the only way you're able to conquer that is through the Spirit of God. But the origin is forgiveness. When you know how much God forgave you, it allows you to forgive other people. See, I'm not just talking about a two-year-old, almost a three-year-old, though. I know many of you, your stories, you have a 16-year-old, older, younger. They're not making the decisions that you wish they would. And you're frustrated. You don't know what to do. You've tried to be Superman or Superwoman, and you've tried to just give up. I don't care. I don't even like them. And so there's this tension. What do you do with the tension? I would argue you have to forgive. Trust and forgiveness are two different things. But what I need you to know here today is that even when our kids are wayward, they need to know that mom and dad forgive them as their heavenly father forgave them. And when there is forgiveness that is given to them, we are able then to live by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, right, at, right after that, it says, make every effort to keep yourselves united. Somebody say united. In the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. It's this imagery of, of being sewn together, of being strapped together. Hey. Ready? Always be gentle, always be patient, always be kind, forgive always. That's how to be a good parent. You're like, yeah, um, but what, what, what about when I can't? Right, I don't know, sorry. Come back next week. That's why I hated public speaking at the schools, not this school. When I, when I was in evangelism, I'd go into a lot of different schools. You couldn't talk about Jesus. So I, I went up there, and I'd, I'd share my story, and I said, and then one day, I made a choice. And that was it. Decided to be better. I just thought, you know what? This isn't working for me. No, 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 no. One day, I was changed by God. One day, God came in and redeemed me. And see, what's so special about that is in a few days, it'll be the 21st. In a few days, I will be saved and sober 14 years. Amen. To God be the glory. And in a few days, the well, Springfield, Marshfield, as a whole, will be eight years old. 
And what does that have anything to do with parenting? Not much. But it does have everything to do with when you are united in the spirit, you are able to do things you never thought you could. I'm not standing up here telling you to do this and do this and do this and be better in your own strength. Oh, no, I have no idea. But I know this. When you are united in the spirit of God, you are then able to show the love of God. What does it look like? Well, quickly, go to Galatians 5.22. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are not characteristics in themselves where it's like, I'm a Christian, now I'm going to do this. It's as the Spirit of God is within you, you are then able to live this kind of way. Could you do some of those sometimes before Jesus? You better believe it. Could you do it always? No, you could not. And so Dylan gets saved, and here's where I want to challenge some of your theology. We live in the Bible Belt, so really we, a lot of times we fall in these two extreme categories. Category number one is what I like to call good old boy theology or country music theology. Right, you know, God is great, beer is good, that whole thing, right? People are crazy. But, it, but it's over here, it's like, I'm a sinner saved by grace, I'm going to be dominated by sin each and every day, I'm just, I'm gonna, that's who I am, and, and listen, I'm a sinner saved by grace. You'd be correct. You are a sinner saved by grace. We are saved grace through faith. But then, that's only part of the story. Let the Lord God sanctify you through and through. Be holy as I am holy. It is not we who is holy. It's the spirit of God within us that is holy and, and allows us to live holy lives. Well, I mean, I, I, I kicked the dog again. I called her a, a blankety blank, 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 and my kids aren't with the crap. Yeah, okay. But what is God doing? What's the other one doing? What's over here? It's, well, I mean, hey, I'm going to try so hard. White knuckle. I'm going to be the best husband, the best wife, the best father, the best mother. And I'm going to, listen, God helps those who help themselves. So we're going to, God, we'll check in with you. But, man, we're going to do everything we can and just grind. And you'll just exhaust yourself. So what's the median? I don't know if it's balanced as much as it is in tune with the Spirit. It's letting him live through you. If you're with me, say yes. Dylan, how does this help us, parent? Because it's Jesus in and through you. Let me give it to you another way. Because we live on this side of the Bible. We know the stories and all that. Sometimes we need to, to read it in real time's sake. So let's look at John chapter 15, verse 9 through 13. It says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples before he ascends to heaven. It says, when you obey my commands, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Let me just tell you this. And you think having joy is doing whatever you want, sleeping around, watching whatever, doing whatever, hanging with the boys. You want true, everlasting joy. It's the joy of the Lord. It says, this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. There is no greater love than those who lay down their lives for their friend. You're like, dude, that is a lot of scripture, I know. How does this, Dylan, let me be a real good parent? Well, the disciples were scared that Jesus was leaving. And not only scared, they were annoyed. And one of the things that the disciples asked was, hey, can you show us the Father? Can you show us God? Valid question, you would think. Jesus is annoyed. I have been with you all this time, and you still don't know what the Father looks like. And Thomas, we all pick on doubting Thomas. He was the only one who was bold enough to be like, does anyone know what he's talking about? Right? You know, he'd been in that classroom, everybody's like, that's good. I'm over here like, what? Somebody asked a question, I'm like, praise God, it ain't just me. No, Jesus, I don't get it. 
What do you mean you're going to be with the Father? We give up everything. Yeah, but it's better that I go. And, and Jesus says, okay, let me put it this way. And I'm going to paraphrase. I have been shown, this is Jesus speaking, I have been shown the Father's love. You with me? Peter, look at me. Squirrel. I've been with the Father. When I've been praying by myself and he didn't know what I was doing, I, 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 was, I was being fathered. Jesus, fully God, fully man. And so then I would come back and I would, I would tell you what the Father told me, okay? And, and so I was fathered by the Father, and then I was, in essence, fathering you guys to say, this is what it looks like, okay? But you're leaving us, but I'm not. I'm not, though. Yes, I, I'm physically leaving you, but I will never leave you nor forsake you spiritually. See, I'm going to send you a gift. And the gift is the helper, and the helper means the Holy Spirit. And he's going to guide you. And you're going to mess up, you're going to abandon me, and all these different things, but I'm going to be with you. So he ascends. Spirit comes. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes inside the church, and Peter is no longer Simon, but he is actually Peter. Peter begins to have self-control. Peter begins to be courageous. Peter begins to live a life that he never thought he could. Peter is the one who says you need to be gentle. But he was the one who cut the dude's ears off after Jesus was arrested. What happened? It was the Spirit of God that got in his heart. If you're with me, say yes. Stay with me. Dylan, again, how does this allow me to be a real good parent? Because you need the Holy Spirit to do for you what you can't do for yourself. And when that lust comes over you, and that anger comes over you, and the bitterness comes over you, and the impatience and fill in the blank, it's spirit guide me. But you're in a war. And it takes a whole lot of work. And here's where I end. I've shared oftentimes. I was the only child for most of my life. And then Jagger came in years later. And, and I was not his father, didn't pretend to be his father. Whether he knew it or not, I took him under my wing. And we did a whole lot of things. I paid a whole lot of meals, and I don't know why I still pay for a lot of meals. And, and there were times where I was frustrated with him because I could tell the, the world was bubbling up within him, and I wanted to say, boy, it's not where we're headed. And the Lord brought him back. And, and it's a blessing to watch God use him. And he's not perfect. Believe me, just get around him. But it's pretty special for me if I go to the gym with him or go wherever. And I, I, I just watch people begin to flock to him and God using him, especially in Springfield. And last Sunday, I don't know if you guys know, knew this or not, especially you, Jake, uh, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. He's a Dallas fan, pray for him. I had one of my friends there with me, die hard, like too much probably. We leave and he texted me and it was just awesome, right? We're losing our minds and all that. And he says, hey D, he said, um, I just wanna let you know, man, Jag's a really good kid. I said, yeah, man. He said, but I wanna let you know, man, what, what God did in you 14 years ago you showed him a path that he never would have seen. Thanks, dude. Because me and this dude, were, we rolled around together. We were rough together. And so about that time, around that same time frame, Jack and I were there in the gym and we're talking and there's one of my friends there who I love and, and God's done a real work in his life recently. It's really cool watching him grow. And we're just kind of talking and talking about kids and I'm talking and like, yeah, man, I'm learning how to be this parent and my little boy's angry and I'm, I'm trying, you know, I'm praying through. And he's like, yeah. 
And it was just kind of a, you know, guy talk, but he's like, yeah, I'm afraid my, my boys are gonna be the same way. He's gonna do the same thing. And you know, I'm hoping he kind of comes back around. It's probably gonna be, I said, bull crap. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I said, let me tell you, man. I love this dude. I just saw it as a teaching moment. I said, all he knows is who dad is today. And I don't care what, how thick that blood is. There's no thicker blood than the blood of Jesus that came to wash our sins away. And when his spirit gets in our spirit, it changes the trajectory of our families. And I'm here to remind some of you, you've adopted this terrible mentality and I'm not coming against you, I'm coming against darkness. Well, boys will be boys, girls will be bo girls, they'll figure it out one day. I believe it's time for this generation to stand in the gap and say, not today, Satan. Not my boy, not my girl. Dylan, you really think it's that dramatic? Look around. How do you think we got here as a society? You think it's because of the White House? It's because of men and women not being who they're called to be in their house. We don't have a government problem. We don't have a school district problem. We don't know sometimes. We have a leadership problem. And it is time for us to go to the bat for our kids. And if we want to be real good parents, we've gotta be really loving and patient, but it takes a whole lot of work. And here's where I end. Some of you, you can't go back. Kids have memories. But God can bring healing. And some of you are single. And you're like, I don't really know how I'm gonna do this whole thing. It starts today being who God's called you to be. I wanna do something different. I don't wanna have everybody stand. I don't want you to stand. I'm gonna, I am gonna open up the altars. You wanna come and pray. I want you to close your eyes and, and if you're married, or dating, whatever, and you have somebody next to you, would you just get by them? You grab their hand, put, put your hand around them. Team, if you just uh, quietly begin to sing that song. You gotta learn how to pray for your families, church, and for your kids. Whether it's out loud or softly to yourself or just in your mind, I just want us to pray for our families, pray for our world, pray for the future babies to be born, pray for this country, pray for this community. Praise God for this school district. Pray for the leaders. Pray for your, the wayward prodigals. Pray for your loss, mom and dad. Pray for you as the man. Maybe spouse, if you're willing, just pray for your husband right now to be the leader, spiritual leader that he needs to be. Men pray that you would love the bride of Christ, or excuse me, love your bride the way you're supposed to. Pray for your children. Give them your kids anxiety. Give them your kids anger. Give them your kids problem. Old, young, male, female.
It's fun and games until it's not, church. I'm going to ask the prayer team to come down. Team, just continue to play. You can stand if you want to stand. I'm going to open up the altars. You can continue to pray. Stay in that. The prayer team's down here if you want to be prayed over and anointed. I'm going to open up the altars. If you're dating somebody, man, pray together. If you're single, pray together. Or pray with you and the Lord. Families, I encourage you to get together, truly, if you can. This is a special moment. Talking about the family. Some of you, you don't have family around you. You're the family of God. Grab a friend. Let's start talking about the favor. Let's sing it.